That was Brenda Snipes uh, saying, yeah, we're going to get it in. We're 100 percent confident the recount will be done by the Thursday deadline, um, which was extended. It was supposed to be tomorrow. And we don't even know on a lot of these things what that means. And then the problems that we had in Palm Beach County last night, which, of course, is the machines don't work. You know, it's the most amazing thing here is the history. It keeps happening, but not anywhere else. But Broward and Palm Beach and Palm Beach's machines overheated. How do they overheat? And and to think you, this really goes back to 2000. That in this day and age of technology, in this day and age, knowing we have problems that we just don't fix is insane. Uh, anyway, Dan Bongino joins us, and he, of course, the author of the bestseller Spygate. And, uh, you know, I, I'm watching what you have been saying about this, and you have a different take maybe than everybody else. And, for example, when we look at the commissioner of agriculture seat, what was there was a 5,000 vote margin win, and that now has been overturned as opposed to, say, DeSantis is up, what, 36,000, and yeah. uh, Rick Scott that's up by 20. 12,000. Yeah, yeah, Sean, he, the Agriculture Commission was up by 40,000. He's now is, down by 5,000. Right. So he, this race has already been potentially stolen. Now, here's why this matters. Yes, absolutely. Point stipulated. The Senate race between Nelson and Scott is critical. The Democrats would fleece that if they could. The governor's race is critical, too. They would steal that if they could. I've been, if they could. I've been making the argument, though, that they are keeping the attention on those two races because they've already stolen the agriculture commissioner race. Now, why does this matter, Sean? Every, your listeners may be like, well, why would anybody care about an agriculture commissioner race in Florida? Because this is all about your Second Amendment. Florida, Sean, unlike a lot of other states, the issuance of concealed carry permits is controlled by the Agriculture Commissioner. It's a long story why it's an elected position. It used to be under the Secretary of State, which is now appointed. They didn't want that. A lot of gun rights groups, for good reason, wanted voter control over the issue. But Matt Caldwell, the Republican, was up by 40,000. He went to sleep. And he finds out he's losing by 5,000 to a, 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 a big time anti Second Amendment advocate named Nikki Freed. And it, Sean, 80,000 votes just seem to magically appear. One more thing on it. Caldwell appeared on Fox and Friends this morning and he said it right. He said, listen, I'm not looking to win by any kind of fraud. I just want an honest vote count. If I lost fair and square, I lost fair and square. But where the heck did these 80,000 magic votes come from? This race. This is a debacle down here. It's a, well, it's a total debacle. But to what extent, though? I mean, you got the Florida legislature. They would obviously be able to, be able to weigh in if there was any extreme move on. Uh, look, the, the people of Florida like a couple of things. One is they do support the Second Amendment universally. And secondly, they don't. They love the fact that they are a no property tax state. <laughs> One of the few in the country, and and I think that was one of the big reasons why Ron DeSantis beat Andrew Gillum in spite of mil. It was yeah. Andrew Gillum was like there were three stars: uh, Stacey Abrams, Andrew Gillum, and and Beto Bozo in in Texas, where millions and millions and millions outside money poured in, and and those were the races they they wanted to win badly. But the forty percent business tax, I just I think it blew Floridians away as close as the race was. I mean, look, uh, there were a lot of headwinds, as I pointed out many times between Senate and House. Obama lost what sixty nine s- seats altogether. Clinton sixty seats in their first midterms. By any measure, Trump winning yeah. three seats in the Senate it is a massive win for Republicans when you compare it historically, and it's only happened three times where in a first midterm a president picks up Senate seats. So it, it to me, it's um, it's it just fascinating. I, I, I just don't know. I don't have confidence. I don't know why. I just don't trust these people. I don't know what they've done. There's been no following the votes. Nobody knows anything. They just keep showing up. Well, a couple of things. Is. First, on your on your first question, yes, you're right. The Agriculture Commissioner can't you don't change any gun laws. Or she's, uh, she, if Nikki Freed wins, she's not in the legislature. But, Sean, they control the issuance of the permits. And remember this, as Tom Fitness, Judicial Watch, always said, process, Sean, is punishment. If you control the process and you slow it down dramatically enough, that is the punishment. You don't have to change the gun laws. You just throw a, throw a wrench in the whole machinery of it and you slow it down. But secondly, uh, yes, you nailed it. The issue in Florida is they ran way too progressive of a candidate, even in what should have been, according to historical midterm standards, a tidal wave election for Democrats. 
they lost. I wouldn't say they lost handily. Gillum uh, lost by a squeaker, but he still lost. And that tax issue, which you're coming, I mean, you know, Florida, you, you've been you're down here a lot. The, the tax issue down here is sacred. Nobody wants to even hear about tax hikes. People move down here from the Northeast to get away from it. So, yeah, the Florida issue matters. And I think the Democrats are starting to figure out that running Stacey Abrams, Gillum, Beto type candidates in red states. You know, they may get you moral victories, but as for actual victories, uh, you're going to take uh, you're going to take a back seat on that. All right. Let, let's move a little bit further into this, because I, I it, at this point, I assume there's no more votes that they're finding. Correct. Are we or at least uh, do we have that buttoned up by this point? No, nobody knows, Sean. Everybody's still wondering where what the total vote count is, especially down in Broward. Uh, Palm Beach, we had uh, Susan Booker down there and her staff yesterday saying that like these questions were all about demographics, which is a dog whistle to the left because Palm Beach County uh, has large minority populations that somehow questioning them was racist. That says to me that I don't know. Listen, I'm not alleging that they're filling out ballots because I don't know that. Uh, of course, I would not. Say well, there's a criminal investigation. I had Pam Bondi on Hannity last night. Pam Bondi. And, and we have we know now a criminal investigation is ongoing. That means and they're looking if anybody has any information to send it on over to the attorney general's office or local police. So that will be determined. And I'm not making that accusation either. But um, it, it it just when you look at the history, 2000, 2004, 12, 14, 16, 17 and 18, we have problems. Yeah. But only with one yeah, or two John counties. So, yes, and there. By the way, there is evidence. I forgot to. I neglected to mention. There is evidence in the left-leaning Politico. You all can read the article yourself. That there are some election. There is election malfeasance going on. They just broke something today that the Florida Democrat Party um, was sending out something about cure affidavits. In other words, if you filled out an aff- a voter ballot wrong, they can tell you, "Hey, come back in and fix this." That the Democrat Party may have been telling people the wrong date. They could still come in after the fact. To fix these things. So there is evidence that things are going Well, it's on. more than the that. Rejected that, provisional ballots we know were mixed right. in with real ballots. And so it's either right. a matter that they're going to determine this during the hand recount, which will take some time. Or they, and that Sean, means. Think about this. We have 67 counties down here, right? The no. counties that have been through a Category 4 hurricane got it right. I can't say this enough. They had one job. You had one darn job. Count the votes. That you, your job is to go on the air and create conservative content. You don't show up, you don't have a job. Your job as Brenda Snipes and Susan Booker was to count the darn votes. How do you screw this up? This is one of those, like, I'm scratching my head, like, how are they still employed right now? You only had one job. So this, no. this is unforgivable right now, and it's really a black eye on those two counties. Let me go to another issue because I, I want to get to and we've been talking about today, and that is this caravan. And, you know, a few hundred were able to now make it in spite of everybody saying they're not going to be invading. It, it, what the fear? Let me be very clear about this. What we saw at the southern Mexico border when people charged through a fence, broke it down, walked right over police and, and security that were there and their own border patrol in Mexico. Well, the president was saying he doesn't want that to happen here. And we've had estimates anywhere between five and seven and 15,000 people. Anyway, so the first couple of hundred now have made it to the border and, and it's in Tijuana. We'll have the video on Hannity tonight and we're watching the people there. And it's, I'm just wondering, even if they go through a port of entry as they, I guess, are being told and don't enter illegally, but they apply for asylum, how many asylum seekers are we going to be able to take in yeah sean we're bureaucratically limited and here's the the, what the media is not talking about because they instantly you know it's incredible on the illegal immigration and immigration arguments in general it's always spoken about in context of the of the penalty on the people coming here legally or illegally but never the penalty for us one of the things they're leaving out of this which i'm getting from my cbt friends is they said hey dan i got a few emails on this they said, you don't understand all of these assets being reallocated, even if, if, Sean, and that's a big if, they do it at ports of entry, which would be the process. Many of them are claiming they aren't. Even if they do that, these are Border Patrol assets and other assets that are being allocated there towards points of entry that should be patrolling other areas of the border. 
The media is conveniently leaving that out because they don't want the American people to know that. We don't have unlimited government resources. This is a zero-sum game, and that conversation is sadly... My, my fear has always been, believe it or not, for safety and security of, of innocent people, that, that probably the 99% that just want a better life. I don't blame them, but we have laws. We are a constitutional republic. Uh, we have sovereignty. It's got to be respected. The process, if you want to come here, has got to be done legally. And I, I don't think that's hard to comply with. I, I just think that if you have a situation where a lot of people were to charge across the border at once, it is so unpredictably dangerous for everybody. Who wants that? Now, if we did have the wall built, nobody would be in danger of any kind. And that's why I have and continue to support the wall. You can put a door in. You can change the laws. You can do whatever you want at that point. I think vetting people is a smart idea because there are a lot of bad people in the world. And I also think that making sure people that do come here are able to sustain themselves and, and take care of themselves should be a requirement. Um, and I don't think that it, it, I, 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 the, the people with the toughest laws against illegal immigration are Mexico. It's, it's so ironic. All right. Stay right there. Dan Bongino, by the way, his book is a bestseller, Spygate, former Secret Service agent. All right, as we continue, Dan Bongino is with us. His best-selling book is uh, Spygate. Um, I wonder, you know, I'm looking at this public poll uh, by Monmouth University, and, and I look at the numbers, and I don't particularly agree with their analysis, but if you're looking straight at the numbers, the president's approval ratings have been remarkably consistent. I mean, and, you know, and he's now around at the high where he's been and approving of the job that he's doing as president. You look at Congress, it's a 23 percent approval rating. Um, Congress has had a problem when the Democrats go all in hate Trump investigation, maybe impeachment. How does that end for them? Oh, that'd be a disaster. I, I mean, listen, let's be candid, John. We've seen it before. I mean, you, you were on the on the radio, I believe, when Republicans went through it with Clinton. Listen, I'm not defending Bill Clinton. Don't take this the wrong way. I'm simply suggesting that American families who take their kids to baseball games and work for a living and put in a few hours overtime so they can take a vacation um, really don't care about investigations on conspiracy theories like Russian collusion that never happened. Um, and, and what's interesting, Sean, is they didn't really even seem to care about the Clinton impeachment trial, even though that stuff actually happened. So I'm not here to give the Democrats lessons on how to win, but I can tell you right now, if they invest two years in a ridiculous witch hunt uh, Senate impeachment trial on Donald Trump for conspiracy theory phantom collusion, uh, they, they got another thing coming in the 2020 election. I, I think Trump should pray for that. It would be the worst thing possible. Now, maybe Democrats. Hillary, too. We've been hearing. All right, Dan Bongino, thank you for being with us. Appreciate it.